Hi, I'm Salim. And I'm Brenna, and today we're here with Jordan Vote roberts the director of Kings of Summer. We're very happy to have you. How about you tell us a little bit about yourself? I am a filmmaker. Kings of Summer was at Sundance uh, in 2013, and we released this summer, which has been kind of a weird whirlwind. I'm a pretty big dork, and I just grew up loving movies and being transported to different worlds. Then I started making stop-motion movies with my action figures in my basement. You'll, you'll fit in perfectly with us, because yeah. we are all dorks. Beautiful. Very much so. <laughs> so Kings of Summer was your first feature, as well as Chris Gaeta's first script, mm -hmm. which was on the blacklist for a little bit. How was that script resurrected, and how were you brought onto it? I'd been thinking long and hard about what I wanted my first feature to be. Mm -hmm. And I'd pitched on a couple other things, but then the script came my way, and my agents and managers sent it to me, and they were like, you should read this. And I put it down, and I remembered calling them and kind of yelling at them and being mm -hmm. like, why are you messing around with me? Like, yeah. clearly some other guy is directing this. And they're like, no, it's an open directing oh, wow. assignment. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe that because, you know, generally early on when you're getting sent these scripts before you've made your first feature, a lot mm -hmm. of the stuff you're getting sent is not great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in, in fact, it's like aggressively not great. I just, I fell in love with this script so hard and I kind of made it my mission. I was like, I want to win this job. And so I just, I put together all of these materials and if I lost the job, I wanted to effectively be able to walk away and sleep at night mm -hmm. and say, I, I did everything that I could it was everything that I wanted to do with my first feature. Like, it was something that I knew I could take and make simultaneously really funny, but really sort of dark and, you know, ride that line between what it is to be 15, you mm -hmm. know, which is like this incredible explosion of freedom, yet this <laughs> dark pain of not understanding yourself and your place in the world. And I knew I could take it and make it something that was cinematic and visual, which is something rare for comedies. Yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful film. That was a really important part of the movie for me. My DP, Ross Rigi, who I'd worked with for a long time. It's just, I mean, when was the last time you guys walked out of a comedy and said to yourselves, that was beautiful? Doesn't happen very much. Right, it doesn't it happen. Doesn't and, and in my mind, there's no reason that can't happen. People treat comedy like the joke is the most important thing and that you can't have a sense of style and a world around it. And Because also a lot of it is about the kids in the woods and you want you want the woods and their experience to be lush and, mm -hmm. and adventurous. And you want, like, you want to feel that texture. You want to feel what they're going through. So it was a big thing for us to really try and push it aesthetically and stylistically. We make the rules, you know, like men. So we're just gonna move out here and uh, build a house from scratch. How hard can it be? Hold on, what is this kid doing here? I don't know. I, I'm afraid to tell him to leave. I don't know what he's capable of. You have the character Biagio, <laughs> right. who is very over the top. He's right. ridiculous Love and he's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's hilarious. Yeah. And he doesn't quite fit into any of the other sort of themes going, but he doesn't stick out. He, he's not obnoxious. He's not unnecessary. <laughs> How did you be able to include him with all of this other stuff? That was always a really tough character because that the voice of Biagio very much is Chris's voice. Mm. That's so purely him. It, it was this really tricky thing because on one hand you have this character that if you execute properly you're getting all of these laughs but if you botch it yeah. then you have jokes falling flat every couple of minutes Absolutely. you know and that, that's gonna take people out of it. Falling back on the core idea of saying everybody knew some weirdo on the playground yeah. who was like, that kid's nuts and that kid's parents are nuts. It never tipped over into being caricature, you know, because at one point he becomes an, an actual emotional component of the movie. And so it was more about constructing a character where you simultaneously know next to nothing about him, but you know everything you need to know. He's very weird, and I thought, that kid is really weird. But at the same time, when he got hurt, I was hurting for him. I felt really bad for him. And, and a lot of people, like, attached to him, right. even though he is so unconventional. This is a big thing in, like, the post-Wes Anderson era of filmmaking where I think people have started to confuse quirk for character. Mm -hmm. When people just say, oh, we can make something really quirky and that means there's a character, then it's like, no, that's just jokes. Yeah, That's just jokes and something that's weird for the sake of weird. If you can actually come back around, and that's why Wes's stuff is so great, because as kooky as those people are, they're still characters. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still something bizarre going on there. There's still something happening uh, internally. Are there any bears in these woods? Hope so. Bear would feed us for a month. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we can disillusion him. A bear who doesn't believe in anything will be easier to bring down. Well, so. thank you so much for coming and sitting with us. This yeah. was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Please help me spread the word on the movie. Oh, we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. To Kings of Summer. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Cheers.